Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree and where we announce really fun news. All the news that you guys have been waiting for. Who's going to say it? You say it. How about we both say it? Okay. Wait, do you know what we're saying exactly? <laughs> no, let's just, let's just see if we know what we're saying. Okay. Three, two, one. We're, we're pregnant. pregnant. Woohoo. Woohoo. Good okay. Job. As like, I feel like I wish we had like some little poppers to like, I know. Woo-hoo, or some, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't prepared, obviously, but. Yep, we are technically, Michaela is pregnant, 12 weeks now, and this probably isn't a huge surprise for a lot of you because, one, we stopped talking about trying for kids like a month ago, which is when we found <laughs> out. Two, we I always haven't. mention how sick you've been and you've like disappeared from social media and like. Yeah, and I haven't. And every time you come on the podcast, except today. Because, so she's been we ha- deathly we'll, we'll, sick. We'll get into it. There's yeah, a lot I, I to talk about today. There's a lot, there's a lot been, to unpack. It's been a wild Yeah, but that's why I've not been weeks. on social media that much, so. Yeah, so let's start from the beginning. When did we find out? So, I'm trying to think of the date. So, it was my first meet, the, Michaela, the Never Give Up with Michaela Skinner or whatever competition, it was the very first one, which was... It was here in Utah. It was in January. Let me find the date. And it was like, I was starting to really get, like, so depressed, you guys. So, like, we... I want to say it took us, like, six months to get pregnant. But two months, we weren't really tracking. Four months, we were tracking. Too much. Yeah, Jonas was exhausted. (laughs) No, you were tracking too much. I know, but I'm saying you were exhausted No, but I'm saying that was stressing you out. Yeah, probably. Because right when we stopped, like, tracking, because you were doing, like, your pee tests every day, you're using your app, you were stressing so much about it, and then right when you stopped, because remember, it was Christmas happens, that was your last period, and Michaela was really upset because she was like... Well, because... I had been trying longer than some of my friends, and like, I'm it's older. Not a race. I know, but okay. like, it. I'm saying like, and I'm older than them, so like, it was really hard because some of my friends like weren't really even trying to have kids, but like, kind of trying, but like, weren't really ready to be pregnant, and so like, it was like, me and my nail tech. So first, my best friend gets pregnant, but that was like fine because like we weren't really trying yet but it was still like hard at times you know because we I've always wanted kids and then it was like me and my nail tech started trying at the same time and then she got pregnant then I went to church and one of my friends at church goes I'm like nine weeks pregnant and I'm like like so excited but like it hurts so bad but I was like so excited for her then I go get my hair done literally like that next week and (laughs) my hair girl's like I'm pregnant and I was so excited for her because like we've all been talking about kids and then her sister was pregnant at the same time and I love her and her sister like so much they're seriously like the best people ever and like so down to earth and would literally do anything for me they're just so sweet and as I was getting my hair done it was just like one thing after another and I like literally was like trying so hard not to cry but I was like so excited for her but I was like man like everyone's getting pregnant around me and like you know, we've been trying the longest out of any of them. And anyway, then it was just funny because at that point I just sat in my bed one night and I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. And I just prayed like, I guess I just need to stop trying. Maybe we're just not ready to supposed to, or we're not supposed to have kids yet. Like the timing will be right when, you know, God wants us to have kids. And honestly, like when I look back at it now, it's like I was in school. And so you know, everyone kept telling me, just wait till you're done with school. And Jonas was like, well, let's just wait till you're done with school. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I've had friends that are pregnant in school and like, you know, that'd be nice to just be pregnant during school and then be done with school and have a baby. And then anyway, I think it all happened the right timing because I have been horribly sick and there would have been no way I would have been able to travel all the way to the U and do what I've been doing because I've been living on the couch for the last like month and a half puking my guts out. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Long story short, we found out. We found out. So, so it was January. The, your meet started the 19th. The 19th. And then it was crazy because my friend Chloe just had her baby. And 
I think it was like the last day of competition or no, there was still one more day of competition. It was a two day meet. So it was first day of competition. My best friend had her baby. And then I like was like two days late for my period. And like the month before I kind of was having like weird things happen where I like, it wasn't just a normal period. So I was like, could I be pregnant? And then I was like, no, like whatever. So then I was two days late. And then I took a pregnancy test. Without telling me. Well, I didn't want to tell you. I, I wanted know, it to, like, a, surprise a, it. That's just a key. So, anyway, like, after, like, two, after the meet was over, I think I took the pregnancy test on, like, Sunday or Monday. Um, and. No, it was a weekday because I came home from work. Yeah, so I think it was, like, Monday. Mm-hmm. And then it came back, said pregnant, and I was, like so in shock because like you know how like everyone just gets so emotional and they like cry because like you know and like for some reason like I cry a lot like I talk in church I cry I tell my story I cry and then it's like we get married I don't really cry because I think I'm just so excited and like in the moment I'm like this is so awesome like you know Mm -hmm. and then same with being pregnant like I just couldn't cry I was just like so in shock and like this isn't real because I'm like there's been some times where I've thought I've been pregnant and then not so I just was like in shock. So I call my mom right away and I'm like, I hold it up and she's like, what is that? And I'm like, look, I'm pregnant. And so my mom was like freaking out and she's like, okay, well maybe just wait a little bit later, take another one tonight and then maybe take one more tomorrow. So anyway, I took another one that night and then Jonas was coming home from work and I was like, do I wait a couple days and like think of something and make it cute to like show him? But I was just so excited I couldn't hold it in because Jonas has always told me, no, like, let's just take the pregnancy test together and see what happens. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, well, it was too late for that. Yeah, so, well, because when I took it, too, I just didn't think I was. So, anyway, I decided to grab Jonas's shoebox because he still has some of his shoeboxes. And because we don't have, like, any bags or anything, like, put presents in or nothing. So I was like, what What do I do? So I put it in a shoebox. I tried setting up the camera <laughs> in the kitchen. And I, like, stood in front of it when he walked up the stairs. And then the, the shoebox was sitting on the kitchen counter. And I was like, I was like, I got you a present when I went to the mall today. And he's like, did you get me another pair of shoes? And I was like, no, it's not shoes. I just didn't have anything to, like, put it in. So I thought I'd just use your shoebox. Well, I was like, I was not happy at that point. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, he was just like so annoyed. I'm like, okay, (laughs) I maybe should not have said I spent money (laughs) shopping. So then he like opens it and he like sees and he goes, dead face. Is this a prank? (laughs) And I'm just like. Yeah, because you've tried that before, first of all. Well, that was because my nieces wanted to pull a prank on you. I know, but second of all, I had just assumed that if you were pregnant, we would take the pregnancy test. I know, but why together? did I go out of my way? And it's an electronic one, so it says pregnant on it. I'm like, how would I fake that? He goes, did you have one of your friends pee on it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I would not take one of their pee. Well, because you had, you, I saw the phone, and so that's why I thought that, anyways, it wasn't a cute video. <laughs> it wasn't. So, Finally, like, I, all the videos, I was like. I realized she was serious after a little bit. I know. And I, like, then I w- wanted to make a really cute collage video. And do all the things that everybody does. And I'm like, they must like make this up because it is too scripted and too perfect to be real because like (laughs) there's, there's just no way. And I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to be fake. I'm not going to make another one. So maybe we'll post the video and see what it looks like. Go back and watch it. Show you guys something. But no, the better video, if we're going to share a video, it'll be when we told my parents. Yeah. Because that was cool. But Anyways, going back to this one, finally, when I realized you weren't kidding, then I was also kind of in shock because we had, we had like come to terms with the fact that maybe it'll take us a long time to get pregnant. And I was okay with that. And I felt like you were okay with that. And so it was the last thing on my mind because you stopped doing your P tests and stuff in December. And so we kind of stopped like really thinking about it too much. And so I thought, oh, you know, maybe in like a year, you know, we'll keep trying, you know, low key. And then maybe in a year we'll get pregnant. Yeah, but and I so feel that like, but sh- then it was weird because me. I feel like when I was at my lowest <coughs> of lowest, we like, I thought we had missed the day because like, 
one night just wasn't good for us when we were supposed to do it when I was ovulating (laughs) and we ended up not doing it and then we did it like two days later and that's the day like the day that we were supposed to do it when I was ovulating last I just that was when I like broke down crying because like trying's hard it's exhausting and like Jonas was getting so annoyed of me Mm -hmm. because like I was wanting it so bad and so like that's when I like prayed and whatever and then we did it like sounds weird but like two days later and then I was pregnant that next month so I think that's when it happened or whatever because then like we didn't really yeah well I mean my my point yeah my, my point is that like what, I got to my lowest of my lows and then, yeah, but it was just like weird. Cause but, then at that point I was like, okay, whatever. Like, yeah. And then, and then I was kind of in shock too. You're like, aren't you excited? I'm like, I think I'm excited. Yeah. I just didn't really know. What I to mean, think. Jonas, was, to Jonas was like, you, you finally came to terms with us trying. I think you were hoping it would take a little longer. Cause like uh-huh. you, you're ready if it happens, but like, you're not like, I don't well, think anybody's ready, but, yeah, but once we started trying, I was okay with it. I know, but I think you were just, like, same thing, like, you were just, like, in shock, like, wow, this is really happening. Like, I think for anybody that's trying, like, it's still a lot to take in to have your first kid. It's just, like, you know, things are about to change, so I I wasn't shocked that you were shocked. It was just kind of hurtful when you're, like, is this a <laughs> prank and your face was all pissed off? Like, what is this, you know? And I'm, like, geez, I'm trying to be, like, cute here and, like. Okay, but so when we <laughs> told my parents... We got them, so well, I forget what we got, we got a so mugs, it was right? like kind of, obviously we, we told them at like what, was I, I six know, was weeks, like, nine weeks, six weeks? It was, I like, was six weeks. It was like, I don't no, know. No, it was we, right we told after. Them like, we told them like a week after we found out though. Yeah, because then I went to my meet and then I came home. But we got a mugs that said promoted to grandma and promoted to grandpa. And then it said. Like, and there was like a onesie. onesie that said like. Can't wait to meet my grandparents or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something. But we um put it in a little heart. I bought like those yeah. cute little heart boxes everyone was buying from Target to make into like Valentine's boxes for their kids for school. So I got like a big heart box because like Valentine's Day was coming up. And so I was like, oh, that'd be cute to put it in the little heart box. And then Jonas wanted to pick it out. So he picked out how we were telling them. And they like love mugs. So we thought it'd be cute to have let them have mugs because... My family, we have 12 grandkids, and his has none. So we obviously made it a little more special, and my mom knew first because I called her because I was, like, so in shock. So my mom already knew, and then we were going to surprise. Well, so first, so oh, we yeah, told my sorry, parents, parents. So I said, hey, you know, Michaela is leaving for a meet. When she comes back, or no, I we think just, it was, it was just while you were back. no, it was while you were gone. I said, "Hey, oh, Michaela oh. wants a you know a home cooked dinner when she comes home." I was ta- talking to my mom. Could we have like a family dinner? And so of course, you know, my mom's like, "Sure." My parents were excited because we're coming home. And then I told, um, which I was mad. Yeah, well, I went <laughs> I, I went like, snowboarding what? with my brother, my older sister, and I told them just to make sure that they would be there because we wanted the whole family there. Um. And so Michaela was mad that I told them, but they were really excited. Anyways, and so we get to my parents' house and we're, you know, get ready for dinner and stuff. And then Michaela says, hey, I got you guys an early Valentine's Day gift because it was in the heart shape." And then box. Ariel was like, no, let's just wait till after dinner. I'm like, <laughs> Ariel didn't know. Yeah. Ariel. And, well, and then my mom was like, yeah, we'll do it after dinner. I'm like, I'm like, no, it's really cool. You, you, you should open it now. And then I think my dad, my dad definitely knew what mm-hmm. was going on because he guessed. He's like... As he was opening it, he's like, oh, is Mello getting a little sibling? And then your mom said something like, it was funny. Your mom had no idea. Like, even though the thing was open, she was like so distracted about something about Mello. I feel like, I don't know. And then your dad opens it and then she still was like, oh, wait, what is it? You know, like, oh, my gosh, we're having a baby. So yeah, that was cool. It was funny. And then we slowly started telling friends over the next little bit and we didn't want to post about it and make it public till uh, i don't know 12 weeks i guess because that's what yeah i wanted to wait till at least 12 13 weeks yeah and the first the first two weeks were were kind of fun because it was like oh hey we're pregnant it was exciting and then you got sick so i found out i was, was probably like terrible. four or five weeks because mm-hmm. like you know and then it was like at six weeks i went to my last meet 
no, I knew the first meet and then I still had one more meet left, but I wasn't like that sick yet, but it was still really hard because I had to get up at like 6.30 and go till like 9.30 at night. And I was so tired. And then all of a sudden we get to the last meet and I just start to get sick. And so I was at my very last meet trying to like talk to kids every session and like be upbeat, but I was seriously so sick, but like I pulled it off so well, but I was like dying. And then after day one, I started throwing up in the morning and at night and it was horrible because I was so weak. And then when you're traveling and I've never been pregnant before, so I'm like, I don't even know what to do. You're supposed to eat, like try to eat, you know, every hour you need to be drinking a lot of fluids. And of course, like I don't drink water that much. And then being by yourself, like obviously I have my crew and my team knew. I told um, the top two people that work with LR Productions, I I told them so they, you know, were aware and knew. And it's just like hard because I don't have like Jonas there. So I'm like in the hotel by myself, could barely sleep, like about vomiting in the night. And I was like, I need someone to like run and get me stuff because stuff started not tasting good. So I'm like, I don't know what to eat. I just didn't know, like, it was seriously, it was horrible. Like, I don't know how I pushed through it. And then, like, I came home for two days after that, then had a flight to Arizona to go to my team, my club gyms, meet Fiesta Bowl. So then I was in Arizona, and my mom was, like, trying to take care of me, and it was just, like, this is horrible. So I, like, literally was, like, flying all over the place. And thankfully, at the time, um, I did make my first doctor's appointments, but my best friend, Macy, that was on the Utah team with me, her dad's an OB and was able to get me on Zofran because I couldn't, like, it was so bad. So then I was on That's Zofran. That's nausea medicine. Yeah, so then I was on Zofran, and I know a lot of people. Well, it got, it got worse when you stopped traveling. Uh, I so think, so the but timing I think, was good. I mean, I don't know if that does anything, but I think from being so exhausted and just getting sick and not doing, making sure I'm getting enough fluids and, like, I just think that that didn't help. I think I just kind of like got even worse because my body was so run down too. Yeah, but I mean at this point it's – so you've been really good the last like three or four days. Well, yeah, so – But but up until that point, it's been terrible. Like wake up, throw up, stay in bed, move to the couch – keep throwing up I've literally lived on the the, couch and like that's like can't move can't do anything living on like crackers I can't even look at saltines or pretzels anymore oh yeah so at first it was like a lot of pretzels and saltine crackers and like bread and then she got kind of tired of that but then I couldn't really eat anything yeah and then you haven't you've had like some cravings but not really so well I kind of will have a craving and then I'll try it and I'm like nope nope yeah, we finally, we went out to eat for the first time like a week ago because, you know, she woke like up just feeling talking good. About this makes me sick. She woke up feeling good. So we're like, hey, let's, you know, let's try going out to eat because, you know, we kind of missed it because that's like all we do. We don't really cook a whole lot. Um, so we go to one of our favorite Mexican places and Michaela takes one bite of her fajitas and she just sits there and she's like, I think I'm going to throw up. And I'm like, well, run to the bathroom. What are you? Cause you were, I was you were trying like, to hold it in to see like if I could like about to throw up like at the table, and so then she ran to the bathroom. She was gone and then for like 15. All minutes. of Jonas's friends were like, "Yeah, you don't eat Mexican when you're pregnant." But it's hard because I love Mexican, and like the day before that, I was able to eat like a bean cheese chicken burrito, like a frozen burrito we just put in the microwave and it like tasted really good to me so I was like oh that's kind of like Mexican so like I think I could do Mexican and then I was like eating the bean dip and the salsa and the bean tip dip tasted like burnt um peanut butter and it just like was so gross then the salsa was dis- I was like what the heck like it just tasted so bad so then I like had like maybe three or four chips and I just sat there and it started making me feel sick then the fajitas came out because I was like okay well the tortilla kind of like, you know, bread form. And then I was like, I can just add on, you know, things that might sound good, might not maybe add chicken. Cause I could kind of sometimes eat chicken, but not really like meat's been really hard, (coughs) which I know a lot of people have the first trimester. So I was like, I guess if something doesn't taste good, I can just like make a new one. And I ate like almost the whole thing. And then I set it down like the last little bite, take a drink, eat the last bite. And then it just hit me like, I'm going to vomit. I can't do it. So that was rough, but at nine weeks was when I got really sick. 
So two like, different times we've so had to nine go to weeks, urgent care. Yeah, nine weeks. I for twenty four hours couldn't like hold anything down. No fluids. My pee was like orange. And again, I'm not good at drinking water. And so when I was sick, water and Gatorade tasted so bad. And like it would like you know like when your body's like dehydrated and like your mouth just you have like nothing to like saliva it down. I don't know. Like every like the taste would just stick in my mouth and it was horrible and I could barely drink anything. And so I probably needed to go get an IV, but so I call my nurse and I'm like, I couldn't keep my Zofran down. I was throwing it up. <coughs> all, like it was just every, it was just so bad. I literally like wanted to curl up in a ball and die. And it was sad because I'm like, you know, being pregnant, you're like so excited to be pregnant, but then you're like, I did not realize like pregnancy is this hard. And I know everybody's so different, but like, I just wasn't expecting to be hit that hard. And so my nurse was like, okay, we'll see if you can, you know, go through one more night and see how you do tomorrow. I, I couldn't, it came around like five o'clock. I was like, I need to go to the doctor. But she was like, if you get worse, just go to the like urgent care, or whatever. And they should be able to give you an IV and whatever. And so we ended up going to the doctor and then like, they were kind of like rude. Like they like did not like, they like made fun of me for not keeping down the Zofran. Cause the first Zofran I was on, it was dissolvable. And they're like, well, it's dissolvable. So you're dissolving it. And I was like, no, like I set it in my mouth and then it takes a few minutes for it to really fully dissolve. But like the second I taste and it, it's just put it, putting it on my tongue after like five seconds, I go puke it up. So I'm like, it's not really dissolving into my system. So they were like, well, your vitals look fine, but they didn't check my pee. They just said, your vitals look good. So we're just going to give you, um, cause I was, what was the nighttime medicine I'm on? Promethazine. Promethazine. They gave me a promethazine shot in my butt. That was just a stronger dose and it helped me to stop throwing up. And then it worked and I was good for like two weeks, but I still sometimes in the morning would just throw up, but I kind of, I was still nauseous all day, but some days were better than others. And I'd maybe throw up in the morning or at night. And then literally four days ago, I'm 12 weeks. I just hit 12 weeks and I had another episode, but it was like way worse because I was throwing up like every 30 minutes to an hour. This podcast is brought to you by Oathcare, a new model of healthcare rooted in community to improve the health of all families. Oathcare provides complete support for mothers experiencing the fertility, pregnancy, and pediatric journey. Oath gives you direct access to maternal and child health specialists paired with a support system of fellow mothers. Oath matches you with your own care team, a stage-based specialist, mental health therapist, and trained parent guide to answer any and all questions seven days a week, all within one chat. Oath has ancillary care specialists such as sleep and lactation consultants, pelvic floor therapists, and specialists in nutrition, exercise, speech, and early childhood development that are tagged into your chat to specifically answer your questions, and they host weekly calls so that you can receive medical expertise that is paired with wisdom from the other Oath members on the call. Additionally, they have four stage-based communities as the initial way for moms to connect in the Oath app outside of their intimate Oath Care team chat. Join Oath Care for a stress-free community to connect with fellow parents moderated by the experts of credible support and solutions. We provide judgment-free support and personalized guidance for motherhood. Expert moderated communities provide built-in and humanized fact-checking to ensure parents in receiving the most up-to-date evidence-based advice. The community feature is free and always will be, and they have four stage-based communities where parents can ask questions and support each other through pregnancy, postpartum, infant, toddler, and young child. The support grows with you. You can find your own virtual village, and it's moderated by experts. So one, personalized guidance, oath matches you with your own care team, a stage-based specialist, mental health therapist, and trained parent guide to answer any and all questions seven days a week, all within one chat, which is incredible. Oath has ancillary care specialists such as sleep and lactation consultants, pelvic floor therapist, and specialists in nutrition, exercise, speech, and early childhood development that are tagged into your chat to specifically answer your questions and they host weekly calls so that you can receive medical expertise that is paired with wisdom from the other Oath members on the call. For more information, you can check out the website OathCare.com or download the OathCare app directly from the Apple App Store or Google Play at the link in our bio. And I was trying to drink fluids, I was trying to eat little things and I just kept throwing it up. 
and I was throwing up my medicine and I actually made Jonas dry heave that day. He like, I'd probably thrown up like three yeah. or four times before he left for work. <coughs> and well, he, I'm, I'm normally pretty good about that stuff. Like, I don't, I don't like hearing people throw up, but it, it doesn't make me throw up, but I don't know. It had been like four weeks of just hearing you throw up. And I had just kind of heard it all morning, like when I woke up, when I was working out, when I was trying to eat breakfast. And so I head out the door to work and all of he a sudden comes running I'm, upstairs. I, I came I'm like, yeah, what are you running doing? back in. I had to, I had to stand over the kitchen sink, like just like this, like holding it in. And he's was, like, I'm going to throw up. And I'm like, you cannot I, throw up right now. So I like was so laughing. She's laughing. And, and I she, run upstairs because I'm like, yeah. I can't listen to this because it's going to make me throw up. So it wasn't even being supportive. I'm supportive when you throw up. <laughs> okay, but just ran I'm away. sick. I held it down. But yeah, that was like, that was a lot for me. So. It was a lot. But then he held it down, put some water in his mouth. And then he texted me and was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And left for work. So then I came back downstairs and then literally threw up like right after he left and just kept throwing up like every 30 minutes. And so when he got home, I was like, you got to take, I I, got, I can't, I can't do this the rest of the night or all till tomorrow. Like there's just no way, like nothing's working. And Jonas was getting really frustrated because he's like, his friends that have been severely sick had sent me like stuff to try, but I'm like, nothing is staying down. Like I even tried like the pregnancy candy that has like lemon and ginger and I threw that up and then like from the lemon and the ginger I got really bad acid in my throat so then the whole day I could barely swallow and then I kept throwing up and my throat was burning horribly it was so bad so anyway we went back to the doctor and they were a lot nicer but we went later we went at like six o'clock and they closed at seven So the doctor that and nurse that were there that night were super nice but they're like we're closing at seven so we can't give you an IV right now, but we'll give you a shot of Zofran. And if you need to go get an IV, just go get one. But otherwise, you have to go to the emergency room tonight if you need an IV. But we can't give you that. So I got the shot, shot, did better. And then when I went to go get my hair done, I was talking with my girl, Tacey, and she was sick her first trimester, pretty bad like me, but I, I'm probably a little bit worse. And she's like, let's just go to a place I'm going to take you, and you're going to go get an IV with B6 in it. And the IV has helped like the last three or four days. Like that yeah, night, that like- I had so much energy because we had our <laughs> photographer come to do the pictures and I was up till one in the morning and we were just talking and I was like, I'm alive. Like I'm back from the dead. Like I was just like, I think that was the turning point. Cause up until that point you were never able to stay hydrated. Cause, yeah, cause first my pee was really well, low again. Terrible. Orange. Like even, I can't even drink, like when not being pregnant, I can't drink water. I know. Like so even, this is hard even to drink with water. Does Michaela not taste with it. 100% health, like training for the Olympics, wouldn't drink water. <laughs> Just refused to. Like at Utah, we would take pee tests and there's green, yellow, red. I was always in the red. And then one time I was like pretty high up in the yellow. And that was like, oh my gosh, Michaela's in the yellow. Like that was like progress. So yeah, I'm just bad at drinking water. And yeah, and that's normally. And so when, when she was pregnant and throwing up, you could just, you were just extremely dehydrated. I think like so. Weeks I should have gotten an IV a lot earlier. And so I, that one IV, I feel like since then you've been good with your Gatorade and water mm-hmm. and like trying to keep up with it. And that's made the difference. Yeah. But. And then, I don't know. What are some like things we have on here? I guess we're just like. Have we started thinking of names? About. Kind of. I don't like any of Michaela's names because she's weird, like Arizona names. No, they're not. They are. One of them's a family name. And some I love of them. It. Some of them are fine. I don't know. We can't Jonas, really agree. Jonas. Well, Jonas. I'm not gonna tell you my names, obviously, but Jonas. Because <laughs> the one thing he does want is Jonas Junior. JJ, and I didn't know. I think that'd be cool. No, I hate when kids have their parents' names. I just don't like it. All right. It's not my vibe, but we'll see. You never know. Maybe <coughs> if we have a boy and he comes out and looks like a Jonas, he'll be Jonas. Well, so I that's that's the other question. Do you think it's a boy or a girl? So I for sure think it's a boy. I, Once we saw the ultrasound, I mean, I'm like, oh, uh, that's a boy for sure. It just, I don't know, it just looked it's like our first ultrasound at 12 weeks. I don't know how you. I mean, which I think all babies kind of look like here? a boy. When, yeah, it's right there. I'm gonna pull it out. So I really want to. I mean, I like. I've always wanted a boy first, but like 
girl stuff is just so cute. Like, I'm like, I just want a girl so bad. Look at that. Tell me that's not a boy. <laughs> it's hard to tell because not much. I mean. I know, but it's a cute little guy. Or baby. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I guess we'll see. And I've always wanted a girl just because they're cute to dress up. And I want, like, a boy and a girl, you know. I want to have, one, like, at least one of each. And... I'm like, oh, the girl stuff is just so cute. And to like, you know, see my nieces, it's like with my sister, it's like their best friend. They go shopping and do all the things together, which like, yeah, you can still do it with a boy. But, you know, for Jonas, he's like, I'm already stuck with you and Mello. So like, I want a boy to do boy stuff with. But since I've been pregnant, I feel like since I've wanted a girl so bad, I'm having a boy. But like, it's weird now because now I'm kind of like, I think I want a boy. Like, I don't know. It's weird. But then like, I still want a girl, but like. I think it'd be kind of fun to have a boy and like all the cute little like beanies and the shoes like. But pretty much all of my friends that have kids have girls. Yeah, and all. Do I have a single friend that has a boy? I don't. I think don't so. know my friend. <laughs> my friend <laughs> Tacy, her of. sister, and the girl at my church are all having girls. Really. I don't know what my nail tech is having yet. But, yeah. Oh, wait, is it Hayden's having a boy, isn't he? Yeah, I think he is having they a boy. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. But they had a girl first. Yeah, but they don't have a boy. I don't know, I guess we'll see. So we have a list of names, if it's a boy or if it's a girl. We find out. Boy names are just hard. We find out the gender in a few know. weeks, right? Yeah, so we don't, doing that. we don't, I mean, a lot of my friends did the blood test and like already know the gender which like I kind of thought about maybe I'll do that for the other ones but I've been so sick that like I haven't even thought about doing that because you can find out sooner and then my OB doesn't do they don't do it till 20 weeks but then there's this place here called fetal photos and they do it at 14 weeks and I'm 12 so maybe we'll just go pay and get it and then we'll do a a gender reveal and do it sooner or I might just wait till the 20 weeks I don't know I'm just trying to get through this sickness and just hopefully I'm getting better now I might just need to stay on top of my pee color and <laughs> make sure I'm staying yeah, on top just, of like IVs just drink water and when stuff. we met with my OB he's seriously you guys like so awesome I was recommended to him and he was like the coolest and super nice and he was just like, we don't want you feeling sick anymore. So he's like, please call. Because I feel like I've just been so sick. It's hard for me to like have energy to even like call the nurse and like go get an IV. Like I just haven't even thought about it or like where to go or what to do because I've just been so sick. Um, and like we don't want to go to the emergency room because that's going to be really expensive. Like just to go get an IV. So anyway, now that I'm kind of learning more and I've been a little bit more present, um, Anyway, he was just, you know, we don't want you getting, being sick anymore. And, um, I haven't been taking the Zofran today or the, I didn't, last night I didn't take the promethazine. I've been taking the B6 B6 and and Unisom. Unisom. So we're going to try to do that so I can like see if I can lean off the medicine. Um, I'm pretty much Michaela's doctor. Yeah, you've had to go to the store so many times and you come back and, and then I can't eat any of it. And you're like, seriously? Then I'm like, go back right now. And she'll go send get me to this. the store for like the most random stuff. Like I need a cantaloupe and I've, cantaloupe, I need some so good. frozen burritos. <laughs> and then she'll end up, you've eaten every single cantaloupe we've gotten. I know the cantaloupe's good. I think because it's like cold and doesn't have too much of a taste, but it's juicy. But like when you were throwing up, you're like, I need some ginger ale. So I get a six pack of ginger ale. Hasn't touched it. Yeah. I don't, I stopped drinking soda. And I like, got, it's I got not good you. to drink soda anyway. And then I, I know, was scared it was going to burn my for throat. Your stomach. I know. I thought I was going to burn my throat though that day I was throwing up. So I didn't want to take it yet. And then I just, it's hard because I, I haven't had those bubbles in so long that like when I do it, it's like it hurts. It almost like I can't, I, even though I'm sick, it just, it just doesn't, it hurts my tummy. But. Anyway, my doctor was, it was, it was great. I thought it went really good. We got our first ultrasound. We did, we've done our pictures. So those will announce, we'll probably be announcing this week. Obviously this podcast will come out hopefully this Friday if we announce this week. So you guys will probably already see on social media, but 
um, yeah, he doesn't want me throwing up anymore. So he's like, if you need to stay on top of the IVs, but we really don't want you to just sit there and get poked all the time and have to go get IVs. But if that's what you need to do, he says, sometimes people have to go two or three times a week. So just keep drinking. It's so hard. You guys, it is so hard. <sighs> like it's, it's hard because you're literally like, why am I pregnant? Like, why did I do this? But it's like, you feel that way in the moment when you're so sick, but I really don't feel that way. But it's like, like I literally told Jonas, I'm like, I don't think I ever want to have a kid again. Like, this is so horrible. <laughs> and then everyone's like, you forget. And then you have your baby and you're like, oh, I want another one. You just do it again, which like I totally get. Cause when I had COVID, it was so bad. And like, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I got through it. Here I am. Like, I don't really remember it that much. So it's true. You forget. I guess that's God way of God's way of being like, you know, you just want kids. You just do it. You forget it. You move on. He just made it that way. So we keep having kids, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you never <laughs> know, though. Your pregnancy could get easier. Your I next hope. one could be easy. You could be done being sick for by now. I know. And then they always say that, like, with a girl, sometimes you're more sick than when you have a boy. But then, like, some people are sick with every pregnancy. But, like, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, I could always tell when I was having a girl because my pregnancy was, like, similar or, like, the same was when I was having a girl compared to when I was having a boy. So they could always kind of tell, like, what they were having because of their symptoms and stuff. So I guess we'll find out. It's so crazy. It is crazy. It's still so weird to me. Like, I remember when I was first pregnant, I, like, even though it's, like, the size of, like, a seed – I, like, felt like I couldn't breathe. Like, I was scared to breathe or, like, to, like, bend over or, like, to even work out. I'm, like, can I – and I know, like, the first trimester you can, like, work out as much as you, like, have been working out. But then it was sad because I went to work out, like, maybe two times because I was busy traveling and doing my meets, and then I got super sick. So I haven't been in so long, and my body's so weak, and I've lost, what, 11 pounds. So if you've been able to kind of tell from what I've posted within, like, the last week on Instagram and – on here if you're watching on YouTube and I look pale and I don't really talk and my attitude is just like weird like I just like seem like not into it and I feel like I I was reading some of the comments I feel like some people did say it like oh she's probably pregnant and other people were like they need marriage counseling because they don't look happy (laughs) and I'm like well I think I'm everyone sorry. needs marriage counseling, but that's a different. There's been so many times where I'm like, it's hard because like, you know, we, we try to, we want to post like once a week. And so like, there's times where I was like yeah, telling I'm actually, Jonas, I'm like, do we just tell him like, we can't do a podcast this week, you know? And like, but I then like, shocked. I didn't want to give it away. I know, but I am shocked that we've been able to do a podcast every week because just it's from how been, sick she's been. It's been rough. Like I was trying so hard not to vomit and there's obviously we cut out stuff. But there'd be times where I'm like, stop and like, go get me this, like, go get me like this little ginger mint so I can like <laughs> stick it in my mouth. And like, I, I could barely talk like it was. Uh, so now you guys will know. Um, yeah, but like we usually record the podcast on Sunday and then we <laughs> give it to the team to so save the week. So it's you know out on Friday. Um, but every single week until today for the probably the last four or five podcasts in a row it's been sunday she's been too sick so we're like hey let's just try it tomorrow and then monday comes around she's too sick we're like let's just try it tomorrow and then it's usually it's like tuesday wednesday or thursday oh when we end up it like was so bad especially the last one yeah it's been it's been tough so when we were talking about what was the last one um budgeting, budgeting and i'm like <laughs> this is actually good that jonas can mostly talk because i can't really participate i was almost like you might just have to do this one by yourself but anyway, it was hard because, like, we didn't want people knowing we were pregnant yet. But I'm sure a lot of people have kind of already assumed. Yeah. But, and then I. Probably guessed. And then, like, I went dark with my hair. And I, the last time I got it done, I was kind of like, do I want to, like, add a little bit of blonde in? So I put, like, just a very little amount and was, like, a little lighter brown because I would went dark, dark just to see, like, do I kind of want to be a lighter brown or do I want to stay darker? And then um, since I've been pregnant, I've had like a major crisis where like I have felt depressed because I've just sat in the house all day and I felt super ugly and like I'm naturally like really pasty and like I'm sure a lot of you, you know, you feel better when you're tan or like at least can go out in the sun and walk and we've had such bad weather here in Utah. It's been so gloomy 
And so I feel like I've just been really depressed and I just feel really ugly and really down on myself. And I could not look at myself with brown hair. Like I felt like poop. <laughs> like I was just like, I look ugly. I look gross. I, my hair makes me want to throw up. So last time I went, I was like, let's make me as blonde as I can without like ruining my hair. Let's start the process. And so like, I mean, it's, there's some good blonde in there. It's, you know, we're, we're getting somewhere, but I'm still like, it's not enough. I'm like, I want to go back in a month and make it blonder, you know, it's bleach. It just <laughs> freaking bleach the crap out of it. It's so weird. Like I just, I mean, I knew I was going to go back blonde. Cause like, I love being blonde and I just wanted to be like dark for fall and like winter. I just didn't know it'd be like this soon. And yeah, so we're going back blonde, you guys. So I'll start looking like myself again, but Anyway, it's been weird. I'm like, <laughs> it's so weird. I don't know. Yeah. So so what's next? So we're going to be, hopefully by the time this podcast is out, our Instagram post is out. You guys have seen the cute pictures that Darian got. Shout out to Darian. Great photographer. And we had fun. Those will be cool. I'm excited to see They're those. Really cute. And then we're finding out the gender in a few weeks. And then we're doing a gender reveal little thing, right? Do a gender reveal. And, and then, then due dates end of September. September 29th. So we're going to keep And when keep we you went to posted. the doctor, he said we're like exactly 12 weeks. So it's like we're going to keep your due date September 29th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, That's so crazy. We, we got a video when we went to the doctor and saw the ultrasound. So yeah, we'll be doing for a, YouTube a real video. YouTube video like we talk about every time. So um, look for that. That'll probably be posted here soon. And... I don't know, that's pretty much it. We're going to, we'll take you along with us for this journey. Being Michaela's mentioned multiple times, being pregnant is worse than training for the Olympics. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be exciting now to be able to actually document it. Um, I wish we, I mean, I, it makes sense when we wanted to wait to announce it, but I don't know, it's just been, I mean, it's kind of sad, but also interesting, just like the whole pregnancy process and like everything that goes into it. Um, it would be cool now to be able to share it, you know, document it and whatnot. But it's a whole new learning experience, which I know a lot of people say. And, like, I just have not really expect Because, like, when I became an aunt, I was, like, 13. Because my siblings were all spread apart. <laughs> and because my mom had a hard time getting pregnant. So, and then I was kind of, like, an accident. My mom had me when she was 40. So, um, I became an aunt at, like, 13 and never really understood you know what I mean like I just didn't notice things and like I guess like I've just been so busy with gymnastics I haven't been really around a lot when like my siblings were pregnant and like to really experience anything and like none of my siblings got like super super sick I think my sister Katie with her first was on Zofran for a little bit through the first trimester but then she was fine and then my sister Chelsea was just nauseous a lot but never threw up she would hold it down and I was like I don't know how you did that because I could not I can't hold it and it just you start doing that uh, and you like gotta run to the bathroom like you just I'm like it's not staying in so um yeah this has definitely been a whole new experience never would have thought that I was gonna be this sick and so I'm like no be fine because like all my friends have like like that I know of besides my hair girl Tacey and her sister like they have had pretty easy pregnancies. And, like, my best friend Chloe was, like, pretty – hers was pretty easy. So I was like, okay, well, mate, there's hope. Like, I don't think I'll be that sick. Maybe just – maybe I'll throw up a couple times, you know, because, like, a lot of my friends were like, yeah, I threw up week nine or I was sick week ten. I'm like, okay, like a week? That's not bad. No, it's been all day every day for the last, like, <laughs> month and a half. So yep. hopefully I'm on the – like, the end of it here hopefully because I'm 12 weeks and they say some people start to feel better kind of 12 13 weeks it can last up to 16 or it could be the whole pregnancy but I hope that's not me so guys keep me in your prayers would be much appreciated this has been really hard but also we're just really excited and I'm so so grateful we're having a baby so we're starting that me next too. chapter it's this is exciting. Jonas the other day we we got the ultrasound he goes Wow, I actually think the baby's going to be a lot cooler than Mellow. I said cuter. I said, this oh. baby's already cuter oh. than Mellow. Oh, and I was like, never thought I'd hear <laughs> those words come out of your mouth. Mellow I'm like, it should cute, be because it's your baby. I know. It's just but hard because, like, it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't even feel real. And it's like, 
can't really see it. You're not even showing yet, you know. I know. Should I, should I stand up? Yeah, stand up. I don't really have much of a belly, but it's it's kind of there. Can they see me? Yeah. It's kind of there a little it, bit. It's kind of there, yeah. If you're on YouTube, not you much. can see. Not much. I mean, I'm not really. Probably in the next. Just a probably little like bump. 18, 20 weeks, I'll really start to show. But anyway, that's what I look like. <laughs> and I'm really skinny so i'm sure if you guys were noticing all the videos i was like really skinny and pale because i've lost 11 pounds which is not good because i'm already really small but mm -hmm. yeah what an adventure what an adventure so i think that's about it um you want to send us off with the assumption this week yeah do you not want to do it because i feel like i do it every time especially since i've been able to talk much i'm just like this is a good one eh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so today's assumption says, you secretly want twins when you eventually get pregnant. That is true. That is the funny, it's not secret, though. We've mentioned it a few times, I feel like. We definitely want twins. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Especially, well, actually, though, because we just had friends who just had twins, and her pregnancy was kind of rough. Worse than mine, I think. Yeah. And she was, like, um, sick the whole time. So, I, actually, similar. yeah, so now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if you could handle twins. I know. So maybe I don't even know. <laughs> we might need to change our stance on that. But it does sound nice to have two kids with one pregnancy. Yeah. But I don't think I'd want to have twins with my first because that's just like, I mean, already having one and going through your first is a lot. So to have twins, I'd be like overlooked. Like, I don't know. I think I'd have a mental breakdown. That'd be hard. But I think it'd be fun to have one and then have twins and then be done. Because I think I used to want like four or five kids. Now I am thinking, I think three's good. <laughs> And so to have like one and then twins and be done, that would be nice. That would be nice. But twin pregnancies I know can tend to be rough and scary and I'm small, so I just don't know how twins would work and I don't really know if it runs in our family. So if it happened, it'd be like a weird thing, but. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> well, that's all we got. Thanks as always, everyone, for tuning in. Hope you're as excited as we are or almost as excited as we are. We're pregnant. We're excited to start sharing more about this new chapter of life and our journey. Um, but as always, every Friday, we'll meet you here. <laughs> We're so excited. Whee! We're excited. I would be probably more excited, but I still don't feel like <laughs> I feel better, but I'm still not feeling that great. But I'm excited. We're really excited. So excited to finally share the news. It's so weird. Mm hmm. Oh, it's so weird. I just never thought this day would come. But it's here. It's here. We're living life, taking it one day at a time. That's all I'm trying to do. So, anyway, we love you guys, and we'll see you on the next episode. See ya.